Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador, and we have another fantastic show for you today, Quilt the Fashion. Okay, so have you been following along? We've had one quilt block, many ways. I think that's the only way you could talk about it. My skirt behind me, I'm still working on, and now I'm gonna be adding pockets. But I'm gonna do that tomorrow on my live show. Today, we've got Emily. She's taken the quilt block, and she's turned it into a beautiful piece of fabric, and we're gonna make a bag today. So pop in, say hi, and we'll be right back. I'm afraid I have a confession to make. I'm actually here undercover. <gasps> March, now. <gasps> I came to Quilt Club to gain the knowledge and insight to help build the best collection of quilting machines brothers made. <gasps> I'm sorry I couldn't tell you I was undercover. Can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Let's quilt. <laughs> Hey, Emily. Hi. How are you? I am good, and I'm so glad to be here today, and hopefully we can make a fun project. This is going to be so much fun. I see the whole brother crew rolling in, and so you're going to keep with the theme that we've had, which is quilt of fashion. Now, right. I don't know if you've been following, because I know you're on spring break, but we've had tennis rackets here. We've had skirts that I'm working on. We've had so many cool things. And you have another one that's amazing. So fun. You're right. I actually did not follow along last week. We took a road trip and I kind of disconnected for a couple days. So it was really great. And um, it, yesterday was rough going back to school. Not for me, but for the kids. They <laughs> A little bit rough, but today was much better, so we can get back in the groove, and I'm excited um, today to do the project with the same quilt block that I think you all have been working with, and here is my quilt block so far. So I actually made the quilt block because uh, my project is just using this as a piece of fabric. So the center square, I used the six inch block and then I did add you can see here kind of a strip of fabric around all four sides because what we're going to make is a um, drawstring makeup bag or travel pouch actually what I was thinking this might little be today is like a little travel sewing kit um, mm -hmm. my little embroidery scissors would fit perfect in there and I could maybe put some needles and a little thing of thread. So that's kind of why I was using this sewing inspired fabric is because I thought maybe that would be fun. So you can use this bag for anything. It's a super fun project. I sewed this um, on an It's So Easy episode several years ago. So it's a really fun one and it turns out super cute. So we're going to use the quilt block as fabric today to create that. And you know, I think that this is something that's so cool. I think I've, I've heard from quite a few quilters that say, you know, they follow the quilt block and then they follow it into the pattern of the quilt. But I think that this challenge is really opening people's imagination to say, wait, I can just make a cool piece of fabric. Yes. Like this one here. Totally. And sleeve on a jacket or a yeah. piece of your jeans. And also yeah. you're kind of seeing because Cindy put together two inch squares, I think she had the six inch, the eight inch, the 12 inch. I don't know what's yeah. in there, but it's really Lots of different ones. ones. Totally. Yes. Yes. And it, it gives it a whole different look. So I learned quickly that big quilt blocks on a skirt all over the place isn't as flattering. So I had to cut my <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> but it's still super fun. So this is going to be great. So all of you, if you're watching, we are live streaming on Brother Facebook and YouTube channels. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and you can come back and watch this. If you're on Facebook and you want to watch it over, I know a lot of people like to watch the show and go back and play replay. So share it to your page. It makes it so much easier to find. That's right. Yeah, so I definitely am not a quilter. And as I was sewing this yesterday, I was kind of thinking, I'm really glad that no one is seeing this close up because, you know, it's not, I'm not a quilter and I don't sew perfectly. and I just never have been a super perfectionist about sewing. So that that is troublesome when you're quilting. Um, but, uh, you know, it turned out pretty good. And if I hold it back here, you guys can't see that my corners don't line up 
perfectly on the square. So we're going to cut this into a circle. And in fact, I'm going to um, just go over real quickly what you need for this project, and then we'll get started. So you need two pieces of fabric, a lining and a mane. And so my mane is this quilt block. So this will be actually the outside of the bag when it's um, sort of cinched up, you'll see this. This is um, lining fabric. And then I like to put just a little bit of interfacing and you can put it on either side of the fabric that you want, but I had this out last night. And so I just went ahead and put the interfacing on there. And the only thing you wanna do is make sure that the interfacing doesn't go all the way to the edge of your circle because we're gonna create a casing around it. And I have found from experience that if your interfacing is in the casing, it makes it very difficult to stitch that drawstring up. So um, I just sort of put it in the middle and that will just give the bag a bit of structure. So we're going to cut circles from both of these pieces and you can create any size circle you want, which creates different size bags. So I'm also going to put a bit of elastic on the lining and um, which will make pockets or not, not really pockets, but like something little attachments for you to slide like your scissors under or a pencil, um, a seam ripper, whatever you you are storing in this bag. If it's makeup, you can put your you know mascara or whatever you want in there. And so it's not just floating around. So we'll add that little um, elastic that's sort of optional, but you should, I'll show you how to put that on. This is just um, a good idea. Inch, how, how wide is that? Oh, this is just one inch fold over elastic. And okay. it was this piece in my elastic scrap drawer. So I'm just pulling it out and using it like this. And I will create several, you know, we'll sew down a few places so that it can actually hold several items. So, uh, but really you can use any size fabric um, that you want in there. You could even make a pocket inside this pouch. And I'll talk about that um, when we're sewing the lining. And then the last thing you need, well, you need two more things. One I don't have. Uh, you need a drawstring. And I just have this roll of, it's kind of like a shoelace type um, gray drawstring. And I use this on my kids' swimsuits and lots of things. So this gets lots of um, things used in my sewing room. And you also need a toggle. You know, the little plastic piece that you put your strings through and then you can make it tighter or looser. So this project really needs that. And I don't have that right now. So, but I can totally add that later because it's simply just threaded through at the end. So we'll be able to walk through and I need to put those on my list because I usually have sort of a few in an assortment for different things and I don't have them. So I will be ordering some, some toggles and, um, but we can definitely use the cord to pull it through today and see. So yeah, I see uh, Phyllis is calling it a cord stop. I think you can look it up by many ways, but you, you can just kind of buy a little baggie or assortment of those separately. Um, and I just like to have those kind of on hand. I was so, uh, some comments here too. I love the idea of the elastic because I have a ton of small pieces in my stash. And also I love the idea of a makeup bag because you could have all your brushes in there. Oh gosh, this is going to be great. Okay. So let's cut this into a circle. And so I have just taken the lining and double folded the fabric so that this corner right here like if i was making a circle skirt you know we're going to trace and cut so i am going to make this circle as large as i can out of this piece of fabric and then i'm going to cut out on the quilted piece the same circle but i think it's easiest just to cut it on this plain one so the shortest distance is this end so it looks like i can make it about six and a half inches so i'm just going to take my marking pen here and I'm going to put a few marks from the corner and I thought about using a plate I mean there's so many ways you can make a circle I actually had a plate pulled out to use and then I realized oh it's just not quite big enough so I maybe could have dug out a mixing bowl or something um but however you want to make your circle but make sure you mark I just marked six and three quarters, which is not correct. I'm going to end up with a weird oblong, not a circle. Okay. So once you've marked those, we're just, this is, you're not really going to see this. This is going to be sewn inside the edge of the bag. So I'm just going to eye up between my marks here. 
cut that out and then open up hopefully what looks like a circle. All right, so pretty good. You can always check it by like folding it again in a couple spots and then I can see, oh, uh, you can see here, this is a little bit like a weird bump. So, you know, not a perfect circle. So I'm not gonna bother to trim all of these imperfections, but it should be pretty circle-ish when you're finished. Now, <laughs> what I wanna do is hopefully center this pattern in my circle. So if I go back to my double fold here and I lay this in the center of that square and then unfold it. Well, this is good too, because it really is using almost all of this piece that I created. Okay, so now that hopefully is pretty centered and then I can go around and I can cut around my red fabric. And you could use a rotary cutter or just, I'm just gonna go around here and cut this or trace it and cut it however it feels most comfortable for you to do it. And then, so depending on yeah, what you're making, I think sometimes putting the interfacing on the lining piece would give that more structure, but we'll see how it works today putting it on the outer side of that fabric. I also kind of wanted it on the back of my quilting stitches to sort of reinforce and keep all that down there in place. So we'll see. All right, so now I have two um, circles and to sew them, we are, so we're gonna try to create a casing around the outside. But before we do that, I need to make a hole where the drawstring will go through. So I'm just gonna use buttonholes today. So we're first gonna start by sewing two buttonholes sort of side by side on one part of the outer fabric, okay? Because when I pull my drawstring, I want the cords coming to the outside of the pouch, not the inside, okay? So we'll start by doing that. And then while we're over at the sewing machine, I'm going to place these right sides together with the fabric. And we're going to sew all the way around the outside of the circle, just using probably like a quarter inch seam allowance. It's up to you what you wanna sew, it doesn't matter, we're gonna turn right side out, okay? So we'll do that over at the sewing machine and then we'll kind of come back and move on to the next step. So let me switch over to the other camera. That sounds good. And for all of you watching, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. I'll kind of monitor those and I'll take breaks every once in a while and ask her. So if you have any questions, so far this is really easy to follow, Emily, as all of totally. you this, this is not a difficult sewing project at all. Um, definitely one that anybody could, I think if you, if you have a sewing machine, you could definitely do it. So I'm gonna put on my zipper or my button full foot. And because we're not actually really putting a button on there, you can, I just kind of want, I don't want a very big, big hole, okay? We have to put our thread through and or our cord through, and I'll also probably use my elastic threader to pull it through. So maybe a half inch, maybe a little bit less than that is kind of what I'm going through. So put the foot on really easy and then make sure you pull down that lever. And then I'm going to, on my sewing machine, go to buttonholes and I'm gonna set the one that's rounded on both ends. And, you know, because we're not actually lining this up with anything, we don't have to be as specific in our the location that I'm sewing this. Um, I'll kind of put it probably in the center of this side. And depending on where it ends up, I can always sew the second edge of my drawstring casing a little bit lower or a little bit higher. So I just want to make sure that there's room and I don't go off the edge of my fabric. And I also give a little bit of space to sew the other piece of fabric on. So I don't know, maybe I'm going to start this about three quarters of an inch, maybe about an inch down from the top of the fabric. We're estimating here. Okay, so we've put that down. You have a thread in your machine, and then we're gonna go ahead and let it do its buttonhole magic. 
This would be for somebody who's really afraid to make buttonholes or they're new to buttonholes and they don't want to throw it on a garment because you've already made the outfit or maybe you're refashioning. This is a great way to test buttonholes because you really can't screw it up. If you do, just make another one. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So it's not, um, it doesn't, it's not an exact science. You don't have to have it. Like, because sometimes you're like, oh, the placement has to, if it's not in the center, then the whole, you know, my whole pants are going to look messed up or the shirt. So right. this really is a good place to start. And yeah, you, it's fairly foolproof. We just need two buttonholes, fairly side by side. Um, you could just do one too, I guess, and, and put the cord both in and out the same. But I like to have sort of an in and an out. Um, and I think it just gives a little more stability when you when you are pulling that thread through to tighten the drawstring. So let's do number two. And yes. I think one of the tips that I like to stress when I'm sewing buttonholes is keeping um consistent speed i know sometimes with the presser foot we're tempted to like speed up or slow down depending on if it's going around the corner but um it really does need the consistent speed to keep those stitches going and not too slow like you actually really just need some momentum to make the buttonhole it so is better i think if you're consistent and a little bit faster than too slow so you can play around with that and again this is just something that if you just got a piece of fabric and made 20 buttonholes, you'd feel like a pro by the time you're done. <laughs> I don't even think you need 20. We'll go with 19 and a half. <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah. 10, you feel like a professional. So I think it's one of those things that's pretty scary. And then once you've made a few, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> and you know, the new machines with their new buttonhole foots, yeah. they just make things so great but just quick question you had interfacing underneath that part didn't you where the buttonhole is i actually don't because this is the thing when i be if you have the interfacing where the casing is unless you have really thin interfacing it doesn't um scrunch up because it, the fabric is too stiff so i do think that interfacing i probably should have put a tiny little piece behind here but i didn't and um but otherwise you really don't want interfacing in your casing because it makes it too hard to actually cinch up your bag but uh Perfect. yeah a little piece here probably would have been smart now that i think about it so because this is just sort of thin quilting cotton um it doesn't you know it's not a lot of thickness so you know tip for next time put a little piece of interfacing behind your buttonhole i didn't think about that i was so focused on not having it in my casing because i've made that mistake before and it didn't turn out well i was like trying to cinch it up <laughs> it's stiff as a board. It's stiff as a board. And I think I was, you know, on filming or something. And it's, <laughs> it cinches so easy, but it really was, I was fighting with it the whole time. Okay. So now I'm going to just line this up in a few places and put a couple clips around here to hold it in place. Um, and it, looks like in a couple spots my red is bigger than my white but that is totally fine we're gonna have to trim this seam allowance anyway so i think the one thing we just want to make sure is i'm going to start sewing by those buttonholes if i can find out where they went and um where did i go just to make sure i'm not sewing too much into the buttonhole right here i actually want to start sewing there and then we are going to leave a couple inch opening in the sewing so we can turn it right side out. Okay, so the buttonholes are right here. Nope, I keep losing them. They're right here. And I'm going to sew, uh, they, they ended up, you know, fairly close to the edge. So when I start sewing, I'm going to start sewing there and make sure that the seam allowance is probably really just like a fourth of an inch there so that I don't cut off my buttonholes. Oh, raise the buttonhole lever. Okay, so then we can start sewing. Oh, that's the wrong button. I'm just going to back stitch a little bit, and then I'm going to sew around. So I might take a just a slightly bigger seam allowance once I get past those buttonholes. And you can see here how the, even though this fabric is longer, I'm keeping my seam allowance consistent with the smaller piece, and we'll just trim off those inconsistencies. Remember with that red piece, I just kind of went around with the scissors, and I wasn't being... Um, super exact. I was just trying to get a circle shape. So we're going to sew all the way around. Again, super easy project. Just sew a couple of circles and you have a really cute bag. <gasps> you know what I didn't do though? Let's put my elastic on. Okay. I was just, uh, you oh, know, I remind me of these things. 
I was just reading Linda's comment. I was like, I don't think she did put that elastic on. Maybe it's like something really cool that we don't no. know about. No. Okay. So you could add it on later, but you'd see the stitching on the outside of your bag. So we don't want to do that. Okay. So luckily, look it, I can still get in here. Yay. So, Thanks, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> I do need an assistant reminding me of these things. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to start by sewing it going out actually the wrong way because then I'll fold it over and we'll hide the seam. So let's do a little zigzag here on the end of the elastic. You can put the elastic wherever you want. It just needs to be mostly in sort of the bottom, what you would call the bottom of the bag, because otherwise it will be, um, you know, cinched up on the sides. Okay, so we're gonna lay that down and when we get to the other side, we'll sew that other one. But as I work my way over there, I'm gonna just add a few stitches here where we just go back and forth with a straight stitch. And this will give us sort of pockets or slots to be able to put in whatever it is you wanna hold in this elastic, so. You know, you can, you, I've used this technique, you know, when you make like a pencil case or something else, but for this, maybe a little pair of scissors or a seam ripper or, um, what else did I put in there? A little needle case, anything that I want to not float around in here. I'm going to make one just a little bit bigger. I seriously remembered at the last minute or I would have been ripping out stitches and sad about that. And then when we get to this, the end of the elastic, I'm going to fold it under so we don't have that raw side of the elastic. And then just like on the other side, I'll go back to my zigzag to sort of pull down. I really would probably sew better all the time if I just had someone over my shoulder reminding me about <laughs> things that I'm missing. Wait, you didn't do this. Wait, you didn't do that. Okay, so you can see here how we have elastic pockets, okay, for several things. And so, you know, you can make two or three or I, I have five here, okay? So that will be good. And we, here we go, we'll go back to sewing around the outside and remembering to leave when I get back around, I'm going to leave an opening to turn it. So pretty simple sewing. I'm just using sort of the edge of my presser foot as a guide. And we do need to, of course, because this is round, cut those seam allowances, clip the corners, um, those sorts of things before we turn it right back to the side up. So we'll head back over to the cutting table and take a look at those things. That sounds good. And I'll try to grab some of these questions rolling in. So yeah. you'll see what the how she sold the elastic when she flips it right side out, just so you yes. guys can all see that. I'll give you a close. I know that wasn't like the best view because of uh, how I was doing it inside the fabric. So I will um, show you up close how I sewed that. So now I have my circle. I'm going to trim off some of these bigger pieces of seam allowance, like where there was a bump and it's not very round. Um, so if there's more than like a fourth inch of fabric, I'm going to cut it and then where it's just a normal seam allowance, we'll sort of leave that. And then you also, I'm just going to put a few small little clips in it. Just like anytime you have a sort of a curved seam that you're going to turn. I don't know if these scissors are good ones. I have sort of clipping scissors. So maybe every inch or inch and a half, just to give a little leeway on the edge of this circle when I turn this right side out. And actually just, I'm gonna just pop and plug in my iron here real quick so that I can, I've got it set up, but it's not plugged in. So that I can press this, maybe switch to my bigger scissors. Um, sorry, I was below the camera. So then I can press this once I turn it right side out. So just um, not a lot of clips, but enough. So 
So hopefully you give it a nice round shape once we turned it right side out. Okay, and then once I get back to where I started, I'm going to, did I, I like got clips, but then I didn't finish it. When I start to stop something, don't always pick up where I left off. I'm with Vicki. Vicki says we probably have all missed a step or two somewhere. Oh, totally. Then you're yeah. like debating, do I go back and rip it out or not? That's always my internal struggle. Okay, <laughs> so now we'll turn this right side out. Depends on what it's for. If it's just for me or my kids, I feel like they often get the, eh, it's not worth it. <laughs> Sorry. You don't get that. You don't get the elastic strap in your bag because I forgot about it. And yeah, Deborah, you could use uh, the scan and cut for a circle. As long as the circle fit, though, it has to be less than 12 inches to be yeah. able to on the scan and cut mat. So it depends how big your bag is. So this is just, you can kind of see this for reference when I'm finished. This one is just over, going to be just over 12 inches. And you know on the scan and cut mat, you can't cut all the way to the edge either. Mm -hmm. So you probably could really only make like an 11 by 11 bag yeah. um, really well to have a nice clean cut. But yes, it definitely would be easier. Okay. So here is the not so circle. I'm going to poke out those corners in the back. And again, you could have added this elastic after we just then would see those stitching on the back. So if you use, if this was a nice solid color or a single color and the thread would blend right in, you could go ahead and add it later too. And it wouldn't um, really take away from what you're doing if you wanted to put that elastic on later. So let's poke out these edges as I'm pressing. Let's see. Let's see. See this pressing this flat and then we will sew a couple more lines so also when you get around you obviously want to you know I have this seam allowance here we're gonna tuck that in so it's nice and um, not flat but you know tucked inside we want the, the hole that we use to turn we want those pieces tucked inside and um, then we'll sew that opening closed. So you can choose to, oh, here's my buttonholes. We will slice those open here in a minute. Choose to top stitch all the way around this bag and then sew the casing line or just sew where the seam allowance is, which is what I'm going to do. So I won't have a full um, top stitch all the way around. I'll just have a little bit of stitching where the hole is, and then we'll sew the casing line. So up to you, sort of what look you want. All right, so now we have this spot, and I just am going to tuck in that seam allowance, level it up, even it up best I can. Hey, Stacy said, um, are you using what your seam allowance is at five millimeters? Well, I just uh, looked at the metric. A quarter of an inch would be 6.35 millimeters for you there, Stacy. Otherwise, um, if you want to use like three eighths of an inch or something like yeah. that, then you're at about 9.5 millimeters. I, did I say yeah. centimeters? I'm talking not centimeters. So yeah. I hope Casey, just so like I, I usually, you, you know, say three eighths or one centimeter because it's so close to one centimeter, the three eighths inch. If you're sewing clothes that matter, but this is really sew at the seam allowance that you're most comfortable with. I know right. some people like a bigger seam allowance some people like a smaller seam allowance. So this one is really project that you can sew with what's comfortable to you because all it does is just affect the size of your bag slightly it won't affect the fit of anything. All right, so there's the, the circle. Here's the hole. We need to sew close. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just stitch really close to the edge along there with my straight stitch to close that opening. And then I'm going to sew a half inch down from the edge all the way around to create the casing. And before I do that, let's, so you can see here, 
my buttonholes got a little bit close to the edge, but totally still workable. I'm going to cut those open. So you can either use uh, tiny scissors or I'm going to use just a seam ripper here and open up those buttonholes. Okay. So now when we can no longer get inside because of the stitching being closed, we'll be able to thread the elastic through. So you just want to make sure when you're sewing your casing that it is below the buttonholes. Okay. We want access fully to those without any stitching and then all the way around to thread the, the um, cord through. And here I probably would have done a little bit better job centering it had I been able to lay it flat out, um, but not too bad. So it'll still be able to gather up and um, have a cute look. That so, fabric, Emily, that fabric turned out so cute. Everyone here is saying, I love the fabric. So many things with one quilt block. I know. And yes. there's one on Thursday. Well, that really is the thing with, you know, quilt blocks is that every, every quilt looks different just because of the fabric that people use. You know, even if the same design is used, my mom quilts, but I would say she's a, like a fairly basic quilter. Like she has two or three designs that she likes, but because of the different fabric she's used over the years, she's made so many different looking quilts because just even if, is it dark or light? Does it have accents? You know, it really is easy to make even a simple quilt design look pretty, pretty great. Okay, so now we're gonna sew the casing. I'm gonna start under the um, buttonholes just for reference. And, you know, this machine has um, markings up here. I don't know if you probably can't really see it, but behind, the stitch foot there there are guidelines along here for sewing which is great so you can i'm going to line up with the five eighths the one inch so i can kind of use that and then there's a whole grid here as i get started so i'm going to you know sort of see which line it lines up with when i'm below the um buttonholes and then i can kind of use that same line here on my grid as a reference as I keep sewing and turning. So this is a constantly moving target here because it's a circle. So we're just trying to go around the circle, keeping a fairly consistent, you know, when it's a straight line, it's easy to keep a consistent um, seam allowance because you just line it up and sew. So I'm watching one of these lines here on my grid and just trying to keep the edge of the circle in sort of the same spot as I'm going around. So. Again, this casing line does not have to be sewn exact. We're fortunate for that because it's just a cord going through. So if one spot of the casing is slightly larger than the other, we are going to be just fine. It's just, your, you know, you want your stitches to be fairly even. Okay, so we get around to the outside, end your stitches, see that your casing is all the way around and now we'll switch back for threading the cording through okay so now we have this part of the project i'm just going to tip it down here so i don't accidentally not show you what i'm doing and i cut the cording it came off a of spool and i did uh, burn the edges so that it won't, um, this likes to really fray, this type of cording. So I did melt these and then after I put the toggle on later, I will tie each of these ends with a little knot and that just will prevent the toggle from sliding off as well as um, the cording from continuing to fray as much as I'm able. Sometimes with a lot of use, I think it does start to fray again, but uh, it will keep it much, much longer. Okay, so I'm just clipping some of these little threads that were along this elastic. So we could see here, we put this through. What else could we put through those little marks? So I could put my little embroidery scissors, seam ripper, although I didn't make a, one small enough, I'd have to go back kind of and add like a tiny little narrow one maybe for that. So lots of things that we could stick in there or make up brushes, this would be perfect 
for that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm going to try and grab this. Hopefully it won't come off as I'm pulling it through. And then find, seriously, those buttonholes are like super elusive on this project. <laughs> they're like they're like the hidden yeah, the hidden into the quilting hidden for sure i should have made it like neon colored thread apparently <laughs> every time i'm looking i'm having trouble okay so just a couple inches at a time you can use a large safety pin to pull this through um whatever you use for threading going around you want your cord to be as large as the full circle so that it can open flat plus a few inches for putting on the toggle, tying knots. So, you know, I've hopefully cut it as big as the full circumference with extra. And I would rather cut it longer than shorter because I can always go back and trim it off. Trim um, it again. Uh, Sally, yeah, she could have cut the buttonholes first. I mean, it's just your preference of whatever order you're doing it. So yeah. Totally. With the seam ripper, you can go back and cut the buttonholes after you've got it sewn together or before. You just make sure you do it before here at this point, and you want to bring the cord back through. So I'm just trying to pull around best I can. Okay. And your casing, you know, could be a little thinner, but just make sure that it's big enough for whatever tool that you're using to slide the cord through. The cord does not need a full half inch casing. It could definitely have less, but my threader needs more space. So whatever you're using to thread, ah, I just, I should, I need to tie in that. I just went back under. Okay, I'm gonna pull a lot through so I don't have that happen again. Okay, so I want this to be able to lay flat to load up. That's the fun thing about these drawstring bags is that it, it's not like a regular zipper pouch where you put things in. You lay it out and put things on it. And then you, I'm trying to think what else can I just put in here for demonstration purposes. Get some more little, little cute things. And then you grab the um, drawstring and you pull it tight. You can see how if there was um, interfacing, this is already a lot of fabric to cinch up. It's nearly impossible if there's a bunch of interfacing in there. Okay, and then I have this cute little, look, it has the quilt square on the bottom and it cinches up to be an adorable little bag. Now I will say, if we're talking about sizing, I don't know that I'd go a whole lot smaller than this because this is not a very big pouch when it's cinched up. Um, by the time you sew it and add the casing, your actual surface area that you can put things on isn't huge. So I don't know if cutting on a skin and cut map is really the greatest idea just because then you're gonna have a tiny, you might have a tiny little pouch. But this one is big enough, you could definitely put some things in, whether it's makeup or sewing, and then it's still, cinches up nice and small for throwing in your bag or your purse or your suitcase for on the go, whatever you are carrying in here. So, so, so cute. So cute. So I, I think I can probably answer a question for you because someone was saying, could you put like a clear vinyl on the inside? You could, but that would be stiff. Just like the interfacing you mentioned, that might be too stiff unless you find like the lightest, lightest weight. Right. So if I was going to, you could use it. Yeah. I almost think like a duck cloth or a ripstop, something else that's wipeable, but is more uh, malleable is a better choice than vinyl. Um, just because you can see this is a lot of fabric cinched up right here. It's two layers and it goes from that big circle down to this tiny circle. So if you want your bag to fully close, which, you know, we don't want things falling out, you do want this to be able to cinch up. So if you had thicker fabric, I'm envisioning that you'd only get your top like this, you know, and then things could fall out if they weren't attached. So you want to be able to cinch that up nice and tight. And in order to do that, you just need this fabric to be as thin as possible because it's already a lot. Yeah. 
that is a really cute, everybody's saying super cute project. So I, I, some of your questions I'm not even going to reply to because you already saw the finished product and you know how this works. They're like, well, let's just go in. Well, you yes. just saw. And uh, um, was it Patty that's mentioned, um, would this be a good time to use the circular attachment for sewing? I would probably say no, I would not because I, well, it depends. That circular attachment only goes certain a certain width. So if it wasn't right on target where you wanted that seam allowance to be, it might be too far away because that's a pretty big circle. So I would say probably not, but it's a good idea. Now, by the way, I'm thinking of something, Emily, that project is so cute. If you made mini ones, that would be a great way to give little gifts or a gift card or anything like oh, that. Yeah. I would to ahead for like holidays and birthdays and stuff. Yes. And you could whip those up so fast. Yes. You really could make it, um, yeah, like a little gift pouch. I actually, I'm trying to think what I used for the casing downstairs. Or maybe I just fold it over the edge. So I took a queen sheet and made, you know, like a Lego organizer down in the basement for my kids um, with the same idea. It has ribbon all the way around. It's like six or seven feet, and they can just throw all their Legos in the middle and then cinch it up, and then we kind of can throw it in the closet because everything is stuck in the middle. But I know I cut this sheet into a circle, and then I'm wondering if I just, because I didn't care how it looked, just fold it over and then added some pleats because the outside is. But anyway, you know, these circle organizers are really cute, and you've seen those big ones for toys. And yeah, like you said, tiny ones for gifts. Oh. <laughs> so many ideas that you could do. Patty, you got it. Chop this yeah. for one. I'll That's be right. uh, <laughs> yes, a little Easter Easter treat or whatever candies you want in there. Oh yes! Oh my gosh! Yes, that, I. Why am I thinking ahead like to like next Christmas? <laughs> it is only March. Yes, it is only March. <laughs> oh, Sharon loves the bag. Oh yes, it would be a very good. Hey Jan, would be nice to organize for smaller gift bags. Actually, I love things like this because number one, they're reusable and people can save them for other things. Yes. I think that's great. So then, uh, yeah, I would uh, put my toggle on both pieces so that when I cinch it up tight, it would sit right here next to the fabric, and then I have you know cut off my ends and tie them separately. Um, and then so then when you open it back up, just make sure you, have, you leave enough cords so that it can open flat on your table or wherever you're opening it. Um, and then you'll have longer strings when, um, and I guess you could tie them together if you wanted it to be like a candle, because then you could carry it oh, if you're yeah. tied together. And just make sure that it's long enough when you open that it can, so I didn't, you can see here, didn't quite tie it long enough because it doesn't open quite flat. So Maybe tie them together when it's open, <laughs> and then you'll know, yeah, Perfect. how long they need to be. Yeah, and then you and then you don't have to spend the money. You know, if somebody's just trying to put together a quick gift, not everybody has one of those little stoppers in their. Totally. Like, hey, yeah. you ran out. <laughs> yeah, I ran out. I saw <laughs> my. So, um, yeah, you definitely could just do this and then cinch it up. And you know, with this fabric, because the fabric is fairly thick it doesn't you know it doesn't even come undone so it just kind of stays like that so I could use that and then tie and grab my handle there so, and hold on to it everybody's saying oh the four-year-old granddaughter would love that yeah but actually I can think even my nephews would love that for their little treasure they do those little treasure yes. <laughs> Where they're putting all yes. their, I, I've never, I never can figure out what's in there, like rocks and stuff. One of them, one of their so teeth, probably be in there too. <laughs> I was just thinking maybe something like this up in my daughter's bathroom for all her like hair ties and little things that kind of get scattered all over. Because this one is so easy to just open up, grab what you need out, and then you know cinch it up and hang it back up. So so many, so many uses. Bridesmaid out, bridesmaids gift. That would be a good one. Oh gosh, yeah, everybody's yeah. Ponytail, fun, fun, fun. Great ideas, Emily. You always have such fun projects. Yay! And you can still see the not as well as when it's flat, but you can still see the quilt block on the bottom. Maybe I should have gone with the even smaller quilt block. <laughs> well, I learned that on my skirt. I wish I would have gone. I'm going to make another one. And for those of you yeah. that have been following, you can download these for free. Yes. Cindy Hogan put these together. She yeah. 
you've seen some of us play on the software. I saw how many people here, by the way, ended up getting some of that brother software where you can design your own quilt blocks because that's a lot of fun. It's a little addicting. Oh, there you go. Thank so you. So here's what I printed off. I printed off in grayscale because I was saving ink yesterday, but it comes with, you know, the print off. It comes with um, directions for how many to cut of each and instructions on how to put it together. So super. And then here's the pattern pieces that I cut up to cut mine out. So yeah, it's very thorough and super easy to use. Oh, velvet. Oh, I, I'm I loving it. I love it when everybody starts pitching it with yes. somebody. Else. You guys velvet. have so many good ideas. Velvet with a beautiful lining on the inside would be gorgeous. Oh, that would be, that'd be a good be one. like a little, little purse hang off yeah. your arm. Everybody's saying super fun project and easy. And yeah, easy. And totally very easy. Yeah. Very Not oh, very Patty, easy. you're going to love the software. I know we're always giving you guys too much stuff to do, but it's so much fun. It's like, uh, Patty, as you guys all saw last week, squirrel. Emily, <laughs> yeah. last week, I, squirrel. I had a little buddy that kept showing up at the door. I, I had to go back and watch the video. I laughed. Mm -hmm. I, I like when and I were crying. We were laughing so hard. He just, I think he wanted his nuts, but it wasn't his time. It wasn't my feet of peanuts. <laughs> wrong time. Come back. The wrong yeah. time. <laughs> so super fun project. So if you go to Brother Sews, I clicked down here. That's where you can find the blog. Don't forget, March is almost over. So if you want the free design for March, you better go download it because after on April 1st, it's not going to be there. So go to Brother Sews, click on the blog. You can download the free design from last month. Next week, Joanne will be here showing the free design for April. So you get that. I always love the free designs. It's yeah. so fun. But you can also <laughs> find the quilt, how to put it together. And then on Cindy, I think on Cindy's, if you can't find the pattern there, it's on Cindy's blog. So you can always message me if you can't find it. I saw it yesterday, well, or at least a post about it on the Brother Sews blog yesterday, but I don't right. know if the link to download it was there or just was talking about it. I didn't like look detailed into it, but yeah. Yes. Hey Jan, yeah, the Scan and Cut has a ton of quilt blocks. In fact, I didn't even realize how many were in there. And right. I only I would only think of them for doing paper crafts. I never even thought about, you know, you can add your own seam allowance to them and yeah. make I think this is going to be a little addictive trend. <laughs> what can you add the quilt blocks to? Oh, I agree. Emily's projects are awesome. All right, Emily. Well, I can hardly wait to see what we got going on next month. But in the meantime, everyone can still catch you on your live show tomorrow, right after my show. Yeah. I have my 130. Yours is at three or three thirty. Three. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, half hour or other. Um, so anyways, we would love for you to join us on our pages as well. So very fun. Brother, thank you for letting us take over your page. Yeah. And we'll have to come up with a great theme again. I don't know how we're going to top this one. We might just have to keep it going. <laughs> it's a fun one. We do it at least again next year. <laughs> I know. All right. Bye, Emily. Bye, everyone. Thanks for Bye. watching. Thank you. Thank you.